Today we're talking about permutations and combinations. A permutation is an arrangement in which the order is important, while a combination, it's not important. Okay, make sure that you have these two definitions written down in your notebook for me. Okay, so pause the video and take a second to do that. Okay, on the next slide, I'm just gonna show you a couple examples of what I mean. When order matters, like in this example, with these dogs, I'm ranking them from one to three. So this first dog here could go in first place, he could go in second, and he could go in third. While I could also swap these two in this example. Do you see that the order is important? Okay, the second dog might be ranked third in this case, and that would change, and now I have two options. So if I ranked these dogs, there are six options. But if I go out to lunch with a friend and we we order the same exact meal, just in a different way. For example, if I order soup, then my salad, then my breadstick, and Ms. Voss orders her breadstick first, then her salad, then her soup, we're still getting the exact same thing. We just told them it in a different order. So this is an example of a combination, while the top one is an example of a permutation. Okay, make sure that you have um, at least the words written down, like, for example, ranking the dogs versus um, going out to lunch. Okay, so let's look at a slide that kind of goes about um, how to do a permutation. So in this case, you and nine friends are waiting in line. That means there's 10 people total. Okay, and you want to determine how many different orders you and your friends can stand in line. Okay, in this case, the order matters, right? Because we're going to bring people all the way through until space number 10. Okay, so we're putting people in 10, uh, 10 people in different groups, okay, different ordered groups. So for my first spot, how many people can I put there? I can put 10. After I've picked somebody, how many people can go in the second spot? Only nine. Okay, this is going to continue to flow all the way until I've reached that first person um, in the line and I have no more choices, okay? So, as I rank these, um, notice that we are multiplying. This allows us to figure out how many combinations, or excuse me, permutations, how many um, different possibilities we have. So, this is called 10 factorial. If you look at your calculator, there is a um, PRB button that stands for probability. If you click that button, you're going to see NPR and CR and this button like this. And this is the factorial button. Will you please write that down for yourself? Um, that factorial button is going to allow us to not have to type out 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 and so on. It's going to actually multiply those all for you. Now this only works when you're going from 10 to 1. So you would get 3,628,800 total possibilities if you did this. Okay, so um, go ahead and try that button. You take and you type in 10, hit your probability button, and then go to the exclamation point. So in your calculator right now, you should see 10 with the exclamation point. Hit enter and it should give you this. If it didn't, make sure that you try again and then ask me questions if you need to. Okay, so let's look here on this one. We are talking about the types of pillows that we can buy. We can buy a blue pillow, a red pillow, or a green pillow, but we only want two and we want two different ones. So this is the order doesn't matter because if I get my blue pillow, then I can have a red or a yellow or a green one, excuse me. So I could have a blue with a red, but I can't have a red with a blue. Do you see that that's the exact same thing? So this one, the way that we do it is we multiply, same thing, we have two pillows that we need and there are three options here and then there are only two options here. But if we look here, we could have the blue with the red, the blue with the green, or red with green. There's only three that we can really have because if order matters, then there's things going on that are going to cause it to um, not duplicate. So in order to do that, we have to take three times two, which we know is six, but we have to divide it by two factorial. 
the number of options that I'm going to get, which is 2 times 1. In this case, that would be 3 total. Okay, you try this one. I'm going to label the goldfish. This is going to be Nemo. This is the seahorse, and this is Dory. I want you to go through and think about how many possibilities you have and base this off of whether it's a permutation or a combination. I'll be back in just a second to show you what I did. Okay, so what you could do is you know that you have four total fish and you want two of them. So four times three, but you don't want to pick the same fish. Like you're not going to pick the goldfish and the seahorse and then say that you could pick the seahorse with the goldfish. Okay, that's just silly. So you take four times three, but you divide it by the number that you are picking, which is only two. So when you divide by two, you get 12 divided by two, which is six. And if you look here, you could have goldfish with Nemo, goldfish with seahorse, goldfish with Dory. You can't have Nemo with goldfish anymore because we've already done that. You can have Nemo with seahorse and Nemo with Dory. And you can't have seahorse with either the goldfish or with Nemo, so you can only have him with Dory left over. So that shows us our six possible um, ways that we could do it. Okay, let's look at another one. Go ahead and try this one. Oh, kidding, I already gave you the answer. So let's not try it. Let's look at what I did here. In how many ways can the starting six players of a volleyball team with eight players be picked? Okay, so there's eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Why? Because there's eight players, but only six spots for them. And in this case, the order does matter. This is a permutation. So if I put this person out first, but in this case, we can't use that factorial button because it's got to go 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. It doesn't go all the way down to 2. Do you see that? So we have 20,160 options. Go ahead and see if you can do this one. Pause the video. I'm going to be back in just a second to show you the answer. Okay, so Elise is listening to playlists of her favorite 20 songs. She can pick from the 20... 20 for the first one, 19 for the second, and 18 for the third, or 6,840 different ways. Okay, so real quick, Jay can pick three chores from a list of five. So he can pick one, two, three chores from a list of five. So what? how many groups of chores are possible? He can pick five, then four, then three. So 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60. There are 60 possible ways that he could do this. Okay, and that's all I've got for you, and I'll see you next time.